ಹರಿ ಓ ಗುರು ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ a warm welcome to everyone on this 18th day of the third edition of the global festival of oneness we are celebrating shankara for a whole month by organizing and listening to various talks on his contribution to sanatana dharma today we have a very interesting speaker vijay varnasi ji and the topic he is speaking on is exploring dhyana murtis of different devatas in adi shankara acharya's works i'll briefly introduce the speaker now Vijay Varnasi ji is a keen practitioner of Sanatana Dharma based on his research and fascination he has been exploring and presenting different indi works in various formats and unique formats as well he believes that that our itihasas and puranas have stories and symbolism of great relevance to each of us he has a special interest in the epics and the mirad messages presented there He uses the power of storytelling to highlight different aspects of dharma. He does this through various talks and lectures as well as collaborations with musicians. Individually he has given talks on Lalita, Bala Tripura Sundari, Sita, Sundara Kandam, Rama Mahima and so on. He has given talks to audiences worldwide. He has collaborated with musicians and conceptualized thematic productions focusing on the intersection of music and spirituality he has worked with musicians such as ram krishna murthy viveka sadashiv sumesh narayan and organizations such as alap indi soft power etc his collaborations have explored themes such as nature and music shiva consciousness rama and devi prana and anjaneya and so forth He is a lyricist by passion and writes Pallavi lyrics, tuned and sung by musicians such as Vishuddhi, Ranjani and Gayatri. He has co-translated the Kirtis of Yogi Narayan of Kaivara. The confluence of Sangeet, Sahitya and Sanatana Dharma are seen in his talks and collaborations. Vijay Ji is an architect by training and is currently working in environmental sector. A welcome again, Vijay Ji, and over to you. Um, namaskaram and um, expressing my gratitude to, um, to Oneness Foundation, to Indika Moksha for um, uh, bringing me to get to, to a part of such a, such a beautiful opportunity to explore and to be um, at the feet of Jagat Guru through this month-long festival uh, in the context of his Jayanti. Um, there is no... there is no better a term to describe his his greatness than the word jagat guru so when uh, nitin ji and i first spoke my initial wonder and question was what part of jagat guru's works can or what part of jagat guru's phenomenal personality can i can i even dare to go towards um, and i decided that um, while he there is so many magnum opus compositions of his compositions in terms of stotra sahityam be it his uh, bhashana tray granthams whatever prasthana tray granthams the different categories of shankaracharya are so huge to explore and i couldn't uh, even step in that direction because i am no authority on those things so i decided to choose something that's very close to my heart which is the uh, essence of uh, dhyana murtis that are revealed in shankaracharya's compositions in his stotras Uh, the reason that i chose this is because um, also i i see this in a lot of contemporary reading and a lot of contemporary dialogue that dhyanam of saguna brahman is treated as something that is a that is something at a more preliminary or uh, the initial stages of sadhana so i wanted to uh, dispel that myth and uh, because that that is a myth that has come up now and if shankaracharya himself has imbibed dhyana murtis in his stotra sahityam for us then Uh, but naturally there is extraordinary uh, reason for holding on to that dhyanam so this session is going to specifically focus on different works of shankaracharya that bring out certain dhyana murtis but even before we go into that it's a little important to set some context and understand why dhyanam what is dhyanam mean what are the advantages of doing dhyanam and what is the difficulty of doing dhyanam and when we understand these four is when we will understand 
what was Shankaracharya's solution to this problem? So let's begin with the idea of what is dhyana. In a modern um, context, dhyana is being equated to meditation. Dhyana is being equated to concentration, to silence. There are many many quick English words that are used to to quickly define dhyana. But unfortunately, it is a non-translatable word. It is not something that one can say it is just meditation. It is just silence because the word encompasses a lot more. The word dhya dha refers to dhi or buddhi. So it is dhyana is about in a nutshell. Uh, dhyanam is about using the intelligence, dhimahi, as we refer to it, using the intelligence for its greatest purpose. And dhyanam is about connecting, it is about identifying with that deeper space for which the intellect was created in the first place. So this is a very, very, very basic uh, premise of dhyanam um, because we, we have a host of works to go into. So I will not be going into a longer discussion about dhyanam itself. But what are the advantages of doing dhyanam? Let's, let's look at that to understand why is dhyanam even necessary? What happens through dhyanam? Dhyanam, the, the foremost and the, the, the predominant focus of dhyanam is that it takes us closer to the Lord and it takes us closer to the divine. Now, the question can come as to isn't the divine nirgunam? The divine doesn't have a form. So, what is the purpose of dhyanam? Because when we do dhyanam, we are envisioning, we are visualizing a certain form that has been passed on to us by uh, our Arsha Parampara, by the Parampara of Rishis. So, then we are doing dhyanam of a form, but we are talking about uh, Advaita, we are talking about oneness, we are talking about the idea that Paramatma doesn't have a form, he is nirguna nirakara, or Paramatma is nirguna nirakara, not even he or she. So then what are we doing dhyanam of? Isn't there a, there a big disparity here? So this is the idea that Shankaracharya also helped us. He concretized for us to understand very strongly that Nirguna Nirakara Parabrahman is the state of Paramatma beyond Prapancha, beyond any creation, beyond any sustenance and dissolution. It is that uh, Loka Tita state that is absolutely untouchable. That is that Shantam, that Sthiti of Shantam, Ekam Advitiyam Brahma. But that state, to reach that state, one needs to have something to concentrate on. Paramatma is eternally nirguna, but that nirguna manifests in prapancha. That nirguna takes the form of prapancha itself. So nirgunam becomes sakaram. The best example that one can always hold on to for this is the uh, little sugar candies that we get during uh, Sankranti time. Those are cast in a mold, let's say a mold of a little bird. Now, the mold is of a bird, but what is being poured inside it is sugar candy. So if that sugar candy is taken and it is melted, it is all that one gets is pure sugar. Sim similarly, when sagunam is being meditated upon, sagunam is filled with nirgunam inside it. So doing dhyanam of sagunam takes us towards nirgunam, takes us into nirgunam directly. That is why it is the same Shankaracharya who wrote so many works describing different forms of deities is the same person who has taken us towards nirgunam. So it is not, it is not any contradiction that he is doing for himself. It is completely him I, helping us identify that saguna sakara parabrahma is the same as nirguna nirakara paratattva. And that samanvayam, that connection between the two establishing that connection, maintaining that connection and identifying that Nirguna Nirakara is very difficult to hold on to by itself. So therefore, Saguna helps us. So that is one prayojanam, one predominant reason that Dhyanam is important. Secondly, in the Gita, the Lord has said, Antakalecha, in the end, those who think of me, those who focus themselves on me, they will come to me directly. There is absolutely no doubt about this. Now, when the Lord has said this, uh, there is a small hook here, there is a small clause almost, if one can call it that, that if the idea is that yeah, I have to think of him at the time of my death, I have to be able to train my mind for that. That means that I need to be able to yoke my intelligence so that in the last moment as pranam is leaving my body or leaving the body, not my body, as pranam is leaving the body, I need to be able to let go of any other thought and hold on to him. And that doesn't come without training. So dhyanam is something that starts to prepare us for that ultimate moment because in that ultimate moment what we do matters. Dhyanam is training the mind saying do not focus on the material stuff and substance that is in front of us. Focus on that form because that Divya Mangala Vigraham is something that is a mantra sharira. We do dhyanam of a mantra sharira. It is not a physical body that one is envisioning. This is a mantra sharira that has revealed itself to devas. So when we talk about dhyanam, it's also important to understand what are we doing dhyanam of. There are a lot of modern retellings that say that yes, um, Hindus 
imagined that Ganesha is an elephant god. Absolutely not. There is a revelation. If you look at the, the Dhyanam is very connect, critically connected to Mantram and we will see how in just a little bit. But uh, the reason for this is that every Rishi who has given us a Dhyana Murti has sat in Tapas. That Tapas has then opened that Rishi up to receive a certain form. That Rishi has seen a form. That Rishi has heard how does that form sound. So Mantra is the form of a Devata. Mantra is the sound formation. A Mantra is the body of a Devata. So ours are uh, bodies of flesh. Devatas have bodies of Mantras. So doing Dhyanam takes us um, help firstly helps us identify that that shariram that we are doing dhyanam of is not a mamsa sharira it is not a body of flesh it is a divya mangala sharira it is something that is beyond this context of growing and uh, having diseases and all of these things that are attached to this physical body so when we do dhyanam of a swarupam that comes directly from a mantram that mantram that chaitanyam of the mantram that energy of the mantram activates within us so dhyanam is something that effortlessly takes us into the mantram. We may or may not know the mantram. For example, Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prabhani Vigram Kurme Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarva. The Vakratunda is given there, the bent uh, uh, this thing of the elephant, that the bent trunk, trunk of the elephant is being spoken about there automatically with or without any effort right now all of us as soon as i said this are automatically thinking of a trunk of an elephant and the next thing that will come is the ears sure pakarna akratunda mahakaya so when we think about this aspect very effortlessly we are automatically going towards paramatma we are automatically imagining that form now i may not know the gana that constitutes this i mean um i'm sorry if my connection has uh, disconnected Vinaji, are you back? Yes, I'm here. I'm not sure if I'm um, heard or not. So I just uh, We are able to hear you, but we can't see you. Yeah, there is there's something happening um, on my laptop screen has frozen for some reason. Um, there's a, a loading button that is coming. So uh, I think it will. Uh, yes. Not... Yeah, is that okay? Uh, no, we can't see you. Perhaps you can switch off the video and switch uh, restart it. Perhaps. That yeah so um the zoom it's saying zoom is not responding so just give me a second i will just rejoin this maybe some issue is happening apologies for this. yeah okay sure
हरि ओम एवरी वन अपॉलोजीज वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग सम टेक्निकल ग्लिच द स्पीकर विल री जॉइन शॉर्टली काइंडली वेट Uh, he is trying to uh, reconnect with zoom there are some issues uh, we are trying to resolve it uh, apologies please bear with us namaskaram apologies uh, i have no idea what happened over there um are you able to hear me and see me clearly now yes okay. yeah okay fantastic please uh, continue okay apologies to all of you uh, in the last 5 minutes i did dhyanam of everything but paramatma so very very sorry for making everybody wait like that um, really hopeful that that won't happen again um so to quickly go back and, be, and also in the interest of time that we have lost out on um and to take us back into that flow just uh, drawing our attention to the fact that dhyanam is something that is required for the end moment and for that end moment preparation is required because there is no saying how that end moment will come so if the mind is trained the mind is a creature of habit um there is muscle memory that is stored in the mind so to constantly focus on something now enables that at that time that is possible for the mind so the idea of dhyanam is that whatever effort is put into dhyanam now comes in use at that antakalam so that is the basic premise of dhyanam so if that is all the case is then it's very simple then dhyanam is possible for everybody dhyanam is possible with a little bit of effort now i'll be able to in the antakalam i will think of paramatma and i will reach directly to him right it's it's as simple as that except that it's not because 
the mind is not cannot concentrate on something unless something that is beyond uh, the trigunas something that is beyond this state of operation unless it has chitta shuddhi chitta shuddhi is the cleansing of the chitta the the chitta attracts a lot of karma malinyam when we perform karmas negative or positive there are there is a certain dirt that comes with it that comes and sits on the chitta with that and without chitta shuddhi one cannot view paramatma one cannot envision paramatma so dhyanam can become difficult the simplest example of this is if we close our eyes and immediately have to meditate on a form of paramatma whether it is devi or shiva or krishna it's difficult to sustain that it's very difficult to even sustain that for a few seconds or for a minute because the chitta shuddhi inside is not yet ready enough for that kind of a state so what does one do in that kind of a state if dhyanam is not possible i'm not going to to be able to think of him in the last minute if i don't think of him in the last minute then the purpose of life is gone so there is a lot of despair right in this entire situation that is exactly where shankaracharya stepped in and he said there dhyanam is no doubt difficult but if dhyanam is mixed into stotras if these stotras give the give form and let the mind even for a few seconds stay on that swarupam of how does that swarupam look then that will train the mind gradually it has to be done through repetition so why if you look at a lot of stotras beat by shankaracharya or beat by others there's a lot of focus saying pathe nityam those who read this daily what, what is the idea of reading it daily the idea is simply that by constant repetition of this the dhyanam also starts to linger in the mind shwetambara dari devi nana alankara bhushite jagat sthite jagan mata mahalakshmi namostute shwetambara dari devi she who is wearing white robes nana alankara bhushite she who is wearing all kinds of ornaments on her hands on her ears on her neck immediately when we say this we are imagining that form then why do they say read it daily because the more we imagine that form the closer it goes it moves from smarana into dhyanam and then from dhyanam it goes into nididhyasam so this is a prakriya there is a process here that is involved which shankaracharya wants for us so that process is something he has helped us tremendously with by putting in phenomenal dhyanamurtis into his compositions today we will be looking at some well known dhyanamurtis and some lesser known dhyanamurtis from well known stotras um, to take us closer so the idea of this session is it is not a panditya pradarshanam it is not an ex, uh, uh, an exuberant display of any kind of uh, scholarliness the idea is of taking specifically i have chosen slokas that are in some in familiar with most of us because the idea is we should go back to these slokas again and again all of us and then start reading it with this dhyanamurti in this mind because dhyanam the or pathanam or parayanam that is done with dhyanam is always more powerful if you look at dhyanam dhyanam is always the dhyan slokam is always read out at the beginning of the sloka at the beginning of the stotra the reason for this is that if that form is being meditated on as the stotra is being chanted then that stotra has that phalam so we will begin um, with because it is morning time um, we will take a slokam where shankaracharya has said that it is important to do dhyanam of this swarupam in the morning and we will see why very shortly so this swarupam comes in the kanakadhara stotram the kanakadhara stotram is split into predominantly the first few verses of the kanakadhara stotram talk about lakshmi and the uh, eyes how powerful lakshmi's eyes are and how shankaracharya beseeches her saying let those eyes look at me from there there is a series of namakas the namostu devyai bhrigunandanayai namostu vishnuru rasisthitayai all the namostu comes salutations and then in the end is hidden this beautiful sandwich this beautiful dhyana slokam which is the dhyana swarupam of lakshmi so the dhyanam goes here dighasti bhik kanaka kumbha mukava srishta svarvahinim vimala charu jalaplutangim pratar namami jagatam jananim ashesha loka dhinatha gruhinim amritabdhi putrim so the slokam although it sounds a little difficult but i'm sure it is familiar for most of us is the slokam from the kanakadhara stotram talks about dighasti bhik kanaka kumbha mukava srishta the diggajas diggajas are the eight elephants that support prapancha support bhumi devi on eight sides on the eight direction four direct four cardinal directions and the other four directions these eight elephants they come when do they come they come when this uh, when samudra is being churned and they come because lakshmi has risen lakshmi kshira samudra raja tanayam she has risen from the kshira sagara and when she has risen indra decides to do an abhishekam for her so he, the diggajas are immediately summoned dighaste bhi kanaka kumbha mukava srishta they bring they are given water they are given kalashas golden kalashas in those kalashas 
ది వాటర్స్ ఆఫ్ గంగా దిగ్గస్తిభి కనక కుంభ ముఖావ సృష్ట స్వర్వాహినీం స్వర్వాహినీం ఇస్ గంగా హూ హూ ఫ్లోస్ ఇన్ ద హెవెన్ స్వర్వాహినీం విమల చారు జల ప్లుతాంగీం ఇట్ ఈస్ జెంటిల్ వాటర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద గంగా దట్ ఈస్ ఫ్లోయింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఆకాశ గంగా ఈస్ పోర్డ్ ఇన్ టు దోస్ గోల్డెన్ కలషాస్ అండ్ ద దిగ్గజాస్ పికెట్ అప్ స్వర్వాహినీం విమల చారు జల ప్లుతాంగీం ప్రాతర్ నమామి now here is where shankaracharya's magic is but just before we go there what do they do these elephants pick up that water they pick up the kalashas and on eight sides of lakshmi they start to pour that water on lakshmi so lakshmi is to be envisioned with eight elephants around her pouring that water on her pouring as that water is being poured on her lakshmi herself is doing what she is her eyes are semi closed she has a mandahasa vadanam and she is who is she who is that lakshmi that is the question that comes up here pratar namami jagatam jananim jagatam jananim she is the mother of the worlds jagatam jananim ashesha loka dhinatha gruhinim amritabdhi putri ashesha without a remainder ashesha loka dhinatha gruhinim she is the wife of he who is the owner of everything who is the lord of everything without any remainder so one cannot say yes vishnu owns two lokas and one loka is the remainder no ashesha it's without any remainder everything belongs to him he she is the wife of that him so the reason of course shankaracharya's magic is in two places in this particular stotram if you just take this particular verse right the first part describes the scene the ghasti bhikkana ka kumbha all of the the elephants pouring that water on her this is the swarupam that we see in gajalakshmi in gajalakshmi paintings typically or idols we see only two elephants but the dhyanam that is actually to be done which is difficult to, to depict in a 2d painting is that there are eight elephants doing dhyanam doing abhishekam for lakshmi now the second part of the magic is in prata smarana prata smaranam is has two connotations one is literally this is the dhyanam of lakshmi to be done in the morning as per mantra shastras those who do dhyanam of lakshmi like this in the morning they will have health in their body and they will have wealth in their home all kinds of wealth that's number one this is as per mantra shastram that is why he said prata namami second thing is the reason for saying prata prata always remain talks about beginning so amma let this be the beginning of my thought process let my thought process begin with paramatma let my thought process begin with you o mother of all pratar namami jagatam janani may i always at the beginning not just of the day but at the beginning of everything that i do and slowly at the beginning of my every thought may you be the first thing that come to my mind amma pratar namami jagatam janani ashesha loka dhinata gruhini amrita abdhi putri so ashesha lokanatha gruhinim is also referring to how is referring to the concept of samayachara samayachara is the concept of never separating purusha and prakriti eternally they are to be worshiped together so this bhavam is something you will see throughout shankaracharya stotras that on one hand he is talking about devi first entire scene describes lakshmi seated on a golden lotus with the elephants pouring water on her but where does it take it to it takes us immediately back into ashesha loka dhinatha gruhinim amrita abdhi putri who is she the wife of she is the wife of the, the lord of everything and who is she the daughter of amrita abdhi putri in this case again wife does not just mean physical wife daughter does not mean physical daughter wife means inseparable shakti the shakti of the lord that is responsible for creation sustenance and all wealth on this planet not just money all the wealth that we see all the sampada that we see be it dhanam dhanyam pashum whatever it may be every kind of wealth that is all her that that is that purusha's manifestation is her and who is she the daughter of amrita abdhi putri daughter in the context of sanatana dharma always means that which has come from so that which has come from amritam cannot be anything but amritam so who am i doing dhyanam of i am doing dhyanam of amritam of that unattainable elixir that is being bathed by those elephants what is the concept of bathing again this is shankaracharya's magic because this abhishekam here of lakshmi where lakshmi is completely wet from head to toe with the water that is being poured by the elephants why 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 do we need to to do dhyanam of a wet swarupam that wet swarupam is called ardra ardram pushkarinim pushtim pingalam padmamalinim ardram yakkarinim yashtim ardra means uh, wet it means moist it means compassionate because the swarupam of the devi that is eternally bathed in she herself is karunya swarupam karunyam is a flow karunyam is not something static if i have compassion towards a being it automatically flows from me towards it's not a a halted movement it's a flow effortlessly that karunyam 
is represented in the word ardra so when i do dhyanam of lakshmi like that that she is there is that the water that is flowing through her through her grace i'm able to just envision that beautiful mandahasam i'm imagining that karunyam coming from lakshmi towards me if i'm imagining that karunyam coming from lakshmi towards me two things happen one is i will seek that karunyam second i will behave in a manner that is befitting of that karunyam karunyam so that aspect of that karunyam comes into being with the kanakadhara stotram where it begins talking about lakshmi who is sitting at with the elephants but it takes us towards she is parama parama karunya swarupini that is who mahalakshmi is and that is that is his focus for us to see mahalakshmi with that bhavam so that is what is hidden in the kanakadhara stotram this can be taken as the dhyanam for the entire kanakadhara stotram itself but remember that the dhyanam must be done with lakshmi thinking of vishnu so even if one envisions lakshmi in this swarupam keeping vishnu in her heart that works uh, very much for this dhyanam so from here we go this is a well well known uh, stotram kanakadhara stotram we also look at how shankaracharya has this magic right he's when he's talking about devi he's never talking about just shiva's wife or vishnu's wife or brahma's wife because his view is that we should see her as that or not just her we should see paramatma is one form that is creating srishti what is responsible for srishti sthiti and laya so it is that one form which has the other forms hidden in it and that hidden aspect is where shankaracharya's his mantram his understanding of tantram of yantram all of them just come tumbling out with just a scratch on the surface so we will take the saundarya lahari the saundarya lahari talks about shiva shakti parvati right it talks about lalita absolutely we will look at one dhyana swarupam of lalita as well in in the saundarya lahari but there is another hidden aspect in in the saundarya lahari which brings out multiple facets of the goddess so it is the same uh, shakti of, that is cre- responsible for vidya it is the same shakti that is responsible for dhanam it is the same shakti that is responsible for pralayam so it is the same saraswati the same energy that manifests as saraswati lakshmi and durga and we will see how in one beautiful slokam shankaracharya brings out a very very hidden form of the goddess so the slokam comes uh, it reads out like this kavindranam chetah kamalavana balata paruchim bhajante ye santah katichit arunameva bhavatim virinchi preyasya tarunatara shringara lahari gabhira bih vagbih vidadati satam ranjanamami so this is found in the sundara lahari now let's just do a split up again i have avoided showing a ppt presentation because uh, it is a tendency of my mind at least to end up looking at that screen and trying to quickly write down and wondering what we're doing but my invitation is the i'm taking slokas that are well known that are easily available so these this is all information that is that can easily be accessed so for now if we are able to just close our eyes and do the dhyanam that itself will be all of this mission accomplished the the text and the literary aspects of it will be found can be always accessed easily without any effort so this talks about um, a very interesting form of the goddess that is not revealed to us in too many stotras at all so let's look at the dhyanam itself right kavindra naam those kavindras those exalted kavis kavi indra kavindra naam chetah kamalavana balata paruchim those kavis who think of the goddess in completely red katichit arunameva bhavati those who think of her in that completely red swarupam what is it that they get that is what the question comes in the first part of dhyana what is it that they get is a question we are wondering virinchi preyasya taruna tara shringara lahari when saraswati is sitting in front of brahma with shringara lahari this is on saundarya lahari is put half of the title also here when saraswati is sitting in front of brahma and she is giving him praudha shakti with her vak meaning she is giving him she is pleasing him with powerful words with divine speech that is referred to here as her shringara lahari so what he is saying is that those kavis those exalted kavis who think of the goddess in red what they will receive is speech that is firm like the speech that saraswati gives brahma when she is inspiring him to write the vedas so look at what a complex swarupam this is right there is a form here saying that those who think of the the goddess in red aruna karuna tarangitakshi right that's what we think it might be but let's hold on those who think of the goddess in red they will receive vak shakti they will receive the power of speech that is equivalent to saraswati speaking to brahma and inspiring him to compose the vedas what is the swarupam here then those who think of the goddess in red shankaracharya and jagadguru said it in one word and left left it katichit arunameva bhavati is all here said what is the swarupam we are talking about the swarupam here is a very very hidden aspect of devi that is called aruna saraswati 
Aruna Saraswati is a form of Kamakshi plus Saraswati. So Aruna Saraswati has four hands. She is completely in red. Katichit Aruna Meva Bhavati. Completely in red. The first four hands have the Pasham, the Ankush, sorry, the Pasham and the Ankusham at the uh, third and the fourth hands. The hands in front have the Dhan Dhanurbanam and the uh, all the five flower arrows. So this is Kamakshi Swarupam. Behind them, there are two hands that are in Varada and Abhaya Mudras and behind them are the hands that hold Saraswati's Veena and hold Akshamala. So this is the Swarupam of Aruna Saraswati. This is completely Aruna comes from Kamakshi and Saraswati is represented in the four hands behind. This Swarupam of the Goddess is a very very occult Swarupam. It is not something we are all familiar with Saraswati in white. If you see the Stotra just before this that talks about Saraswati Tattvam in Saundari Lahari, it says Sharad Jyotsnam Shuddham Shashiyuta Jata Juta Makutam. That is completely white. Look at the contrast that Shankaracharya does. Sharad Jyotsnam, the uh, light, the light of moonlight in Sharat Kala Purnima, Sharat Jyotsnam Shuddham, it's pure. Shashi Yuta Jata Juta Makutam, that her hair is also glowing with that white because of the Chandra Lekha that is coming here. Shashi Yuta Jata Juta Makutam, Varatra Satranaha Spatika Ghatika Pustaka Karam. That talks about Saraswati as we know her, holding the Pustakam and that entire Swarupam. So that talks about a white Saraswati, this talks about a red Saraswati. Where is this Aruna Saraswati? Is, is uh, Jagat Guru referring to something that, that is existent? Is it not? This is a doubt that can come. The answer comes to this from uh, one of the Mantra Shastras called the Vamakeshwara Tantram, which talks about Arunakhyam Bhagavatim Arunabham Vichintayet. Arunakhyam Bhavatim, those who think Arunabham Vichintaye, those who think of that Aruna, their Shakti, she gives them that Vak Shakti. So these three verses, starting with Sharad Jyotsnam in Saundarya Lahari, then this verse, Kavindranam, and then the next verse, these three verses together are to be read by anybody who is in pursuit of any kind of Vidya, because Saraswati Tattvam is hidden in these three. Aruna Saraswati is a combination of Kamakshi, Kamakshi Parabhattarika, the Empress of the Universe, and her knowledge form Saraswati. So these two combined is something that is an extraordinary form, and there are people who have benefited immensely from just reading these three slokas. So Sharad Jyotsnam, Kavindranam, Cheta, Kamalavana, Balata, Purchim, and the next slokam, all these three Swarupams, are Swarupams that talk about the goddesses Vidya Swarupam. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have time to, to go into each one of them, but um, just as a touch and uh, go concept itself, Aruna Saraswati has been revealed to us. And um, this aspect of Aruna Saraswati cannot, is not easily accessible. So for those of you like me who are very curious and may uh, go on the internet and search, may, too, not, too much is not available. There are Tantra Shastras and Mantra Shastras that talk about her, but we have Jagat Guru to thank because we don't have to take that much effort because thanks to him, it's there in a verse that we all have. So we don't have to at all worry about what, how can I worship Aruna Saraswati? I don't have her Vigraham at home. One doesn't have to. When one looks at Kamakshi, one just has to look at that Kamakshi and imagine, ah, there are four more hands here belonging to Saraswati. So that is Aruna Saraswati and that is the magic in Saundarya Lahari. We'll look at one more slokam in Saundarya Lahari to talk about how Shankaracharya asks us to do Dhyanam. When we do Dhyanam, Dhyanam is not a static concept. Dhyanam is not something where we just say, ah yes, somewhere sitting there in Kailasha, yeah, okay. And then it's a, it, it, the mind can automatically just ebb out of it as fast as it goes into it. So that is the waves of the mind that, that may or may not connect to that frequency. Shankaracharya is telling us, I can even do dhyanam of something as basic as this little cup in front of me. Now, what am I doing when I'm doing dhyanam of this cup? I'm just identifying, ah, yes, it's a cup. I can, when I'm closing my eyes, I can think about, ah, how does that cup look? Oh, that cup looks like this. It looks in a golden color. It's made of brass. Absolutely. But this cup has no chaitanyam. It has no consciousness. So when I'm doing dhyanam of it also, I'm just doing dhyanam of a static cup. This can happen very easily if we're not paying attention when we're doing Dhyanam of Paramatma. We can just be thinking of a form. But does that form breathe? Does that form move? Does that form walk, talk? All of these are hidden into Dhyanam because when I start to imagine that form and I pour life into it, I pour prana into it, then that form starts to speak. So this is visible in one of his other phenomenal Dhyana Swarupams, which is, starts with the word Kwanat Kanchi Dhamma. There itself, Shankaracharya puts the hook of the slokam. So the slokam reads like this. Kwanat Kanchi Dhamma Kari Kalaba Kumbhas Tananatam Parikshina Madhye Parinata Sharat Chandra Vadana. We'll just talk about these two lines, then we'll go into the next one. Kwanat Kanchi. Kanchi refers to the hip of the, uh, of the body. Kwanat Kanchi. Kanchi is the hip sthanam. 
one of the meanings uh, but shankaracharya being shankaracharya he is not telling us where saundarya lahiri is composed there are multiple people who have multiple uh, interpretations of where saundarya lahiri was written shankaracharya is hinting to a kshetra when he is talking about this also kwanath kanchi who is in kanchi kanchi kamakshi only who else kwanath kanchi dama kwanath kwanath means sound so uh, devi kamakshi is wearing a an uh, is wearing a hip girdle she is wearing an ornament on her hip Uh, called the vardhanam uh, in in telugu and that vardhanam has bells on it those bells are making noise now look at this this visual right there is kamakshi sitting and there is she is wearing an ornament on her hip do, with bells those bells are making a sound when she is sitting how can they be making a sound when she is walking they should be making sound right so what is the what is the reasoning behind saying that this that it, that sound can come when she is sitting that that it's logically impossible she is sitting firm it's not like she is sitting like this and moving and making the bells make noise so what is happening here kwanat that movement of the bells refers to chaitanyam devi is chaitanyam from devi energy is constantly moving devi is energy herself every aspect of devi all her alankaras are also chaitanyam they are not made of just gold or silver those are all mantramayam so there are mantras in each of those there are sound vibrations that are coming out from each of our alankarams so simply doing dhyanam of devi's hip girdle what she wears on her hip imagining that there are small bells on that hip girdle doing dhyanam that ah i can hear what those sound like that itself is a mantram getting activated so kwanat kanchi is where guru garu is talking to us about the idea that this is parabhattarika this is paramatma that there is chaitanyam from every limb of paramatma so why do we do dhyanam why do we say nana alankara bhushite because those alankarams also have chaitanyam in them when i do that why do we say kamesha baddha mangalya sutra shobhita kandhara why do i do dhyanam of lalita's mangal sutram what is in it for me because if i do dhyanam of her mangal sutram there is mangalyam for me there is auspiciousness for me irrespective of what my gender may be so this aspect that every part of her is radiating with consciousness that she is the source of life that is hidden in just two words kwanat kanchi that is shankaracharya's greatness that he takes such a phenomenal concept and he puts it into two words kwanat kanchi dama kari kalabha kumbha stananata next magical part comes here the breasts of devi are like an elephant kari kalabha kumbha stananata so what is the reason here of saying that it's like an elephant in rut it is a poetic description absolutely but in this bhavam shankaracharya when he wants us to look at kamakshi here he wants us to look at her as a mother so when we think of a mother and we think of a mother who is about to feed her baby uh, through her breast milk kari kalabha kumbha stananata kumbha kumbha is elephant there is an he is making an elephant comparison referring to the mother and a child of hers who is an elephant who is that child ganapati that stanya bhavam that matru bhavam when we look at devi's breasts this is not a perverted dhyanam this is a dhyanam that helps us understand that those breasts are what nourish the entire the three lokas those breasts automatically will start to pour milk when we refer to her son kari kalabha kumbha stananata so now in this dhyanam also along with uh, kamakshi ganapati has come so look at this this bhavam which is exactly what you'll see when tyagaraja swami has retired written vinayakuni valane na bro ave ninu vina vel pulevaramma the amma look think of me the same way you think of vinayaka amma when you look at kanchi kamakshi she is not alone she is not one person from that shiva kutumbam that is standing there when i see her i should remember her children i should remember her husband so kwanat kanchi dama karikala bhakum bhastanatham now her family started to come parikshina madhye parikshina is a very slender hip parikshina so when you are doing dhyana of that hip that hip itself is very slender ಪರೀಕ್ಷೀಣ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಪರಿಣತ ಶರತ್ ಚಂದ್ರವದನ ಒಂದೇ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರಿಣತ ಪರಿಣತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರೈಪೆಂಡ್ ಪರಿಣತ ಶರತ್ ಚಂದ್ರವದನ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೈಪೆಂಡ್ ಮೂನ್ ಇನ್ ಶರತ್ ಕಾಲಂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರೈಪೆಂಡ್ ಮೂನ್ ರೂ ಮೂನ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಯ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಣ್ಣು ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ರೈಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅ ರಾ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರೈಪ್ ಮೂನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರಾ ಮೂನ್ ರೈಪೆಂಡ್ ಮೂನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅ ಚಂದ್ರ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರೀಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಆನ್ ದ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಪೌರ್ಣಮಿ ಇನ್ ಶರತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ that moon which is completely blemishless parinata sharat chandra vadanam that is how that face looks it is glowing with that prasanna mandahasam with that mandasmitam with that joy of of especially guru garu constantly talks about sharat kalam sharat jyotsnam shuddham over there he speaks about saraswati sharat kalam because sharat kala purnima is the purnima from when uh, is the purnima when from chandra 
uh, Amrita Kirinas start to flow. So from Devi's face, Devi's face is eternally radiating, radiating Amrita. Amrita Abdi Putrim there we called her. That Amrita is radiating here from her. So that Shara, Parinata Sharat Chandra Vadanam is referring that from this face there is eternally Amritam that is flowing. So automatically without even thinking that face is so calm that it brings a sense of calm inside that is what the dhyanam that he wants us to achieve that even if i'm able to meditate on that for half a second i'm getting that sense of peace that is what shankaracharya's hope for us is so parinata sharat chandra vadana then ha, face is described hip is described what else is left the hands and the rest of the body dhanur banam pasham dhanur banam pasham Dhanur Banam, which is the sugar cane bow and her five flower arrows. Pasham Srunumapi, the Pasham and the Ankusham. The Pasham and the Ankusham are in gold and there is sugar cane bow and there are five flower arrows. Who are we doing Dhyanam of? Has he said Kamakshi's name anywhere? Absolutely not. But has he indicated that it's Kamakshi? Who else is this? Dhanur Banam Pasham Srunumapi Dadhanam Karatalehi. She who is holding those, uh, the Dhanur Banam Pasham and Srunumapi or referring to the Ankusham. Dhanur Banam Pasham Srunam Apidadhanam Karatalehi Purastad Purastad Astam Naha Purastad Astam Naha means in front of me, may that form come. This is a wish that Shankaracharya has. Oh goddess who is like this with the description that we just gave, may that form appear in front of my eyes. Purastad Astam Naha Pura Mathitu Aho Purushika Shankaracharya's genus. Pura Mathitu he who killed the three Puras, who destroyed the three Puras, who is that? Parameshwara, Tripurasura Samhara, right? Pura Mathitu Aho Purushika, this is the, the focus of the sloka. Pura Mathitu Aho Purushika means, who is this Kamakshi? I am asking for this Kamakshi, this goddess who has a slender hip, whose bells are making noise constantly, who is holding the sugarcane bow and five flower arrows in the Pasha and Kusham. I am asking her to be present in front of me. But who is she? Pura Mathitu Aho Purushika, what does it mean? Why can't you just say Shiva Patni? Why, why this complicated use of words? Simply because there is a Tattva Rahasyam here. Shankaracharya's Dhyanams are not ordinary Dhyanam. There is so much of Tattvam packed in that he wishes for us to understand Kamakshi. One aspect is, think of her Matrubhavam, when you think of her Stanyam, when you think of her breasts. Think of Ganapati, think of her family. Second, think of her consciousness that's always making sound. Third, Pura Mathitu Aho Purushika, remember, that aspect whenever you are chanting the slokam because what she said what he says here is pura mathitu aho means he who think pura mathitu shiva's ahamkaram shiva's ahankaram shiva ahankaram is not the the modern context of ahankaram being arrogance ahankaram means shiva saying aham me when that knowledge manifests out of shiva as me when paramatma says me that expression, that Shakti, what inside him came together for him to say me, that his vocal cords moved, what gave him the strength, what gave him, what is strength in Sanskritam, what gave him the Shakti, that movement of his Shakti, that inner, that expression of his Shakti, that is who she is. So who is Kamakshi then? She was she, Shiva Patni, no? No, she is Shiva's inseparable force, the Shakti that came out from Shiva and said me. So when I'm looking at that Swarupam of Kamakshi, I'm not just looking at a goddess. I am looking at Shiva's sense of I. I am looking at Shiva's sense of me. That aspect that this is a very, very tattvic concept. This talks about Samayachara that as we saw even in the Kanakadhara Stotram that the three, two and a half lines are talking about Kamakshi and then the third line, he brings Parameshwara into it, that they are inseparable. But the aspect here is that she is Shiva's Adhishtana Shakti. She is the Shakti that is present inside Shiva. So she is manifesting. So when I'm doing, when I'm thinking, of, ah, this is Shiva Shakti, automatically I'm thinking of Shiva. That is what Guru Gara wants for us. That is what Jagad Guru has as a hope for us. So that Bhavam comes out here fantastically. So this is Kwanath Kanchi Dhamma. Let's just go through that slokam once and again, just line by line, concisely uh, explore and enjoy that Bhavam before we move on to the next. Kwanath Kanchi Dhamma. Karikala bhakumbhas tananatam. She whose hip girdle, whose hip uh, uh, bracelet is making sounds as she is seated there. Karikala bhakumbhas tananatam. She whose breasts are like an elephant in rut. Karikala bhakumbhas tananatam. Parikshina. She whose waist is extremely hit, uh, slender. Parikshina madhye parinata sharat chandra vadanam. She whose face is glowing like the ripened moon in Sharat Kalam. Dhanur Banam Pasham Srunumapi Dadhanam Karatalehi. 
she who is holding the pasha the ankusha and the sugarcane bow and the five flower arrows dhanur banam pasham srunam api dadhanam karatalehi purastat astam naha me she appear in front of my eyes who is that she puramathitu aho purushika she is shiva's ahamkaram she is shiva's manifestation of energy that is sandra lahari that is shankaracharya's magic that we somewhere we thought we were starting with just one devata in kanchipuram but where did it take us to it took us from uh, to from that kanchipuram into shiva's heart because shiva's heart manifests as kamakshi shiva's heart is red that is aruna becomes shiva's heart is filled with karuna so that karuna becomes aruna that is why kamakshi is red so how many things packed into one simple slokam one slokam that takes one or less than one minute to read but how much bhava that is what jagat guru wishes for us to read even this one slokam cannot read sandra lahari every day no problem read this one slokam with bhava and this will manifest as something else with extraordinary power into our lives that is his wish for us these are not we are not discussing shankaracharya's works to just marvel at his intellectual genius because if we did that we would be doing a disservice to him his focus was never just do just think about this oh, okay just say wow wow no his focus was internalize this take something back from this so that is also my invitation to all all those attending this that internalize this take something back for your own sadhana and weave it into your own sadhana there is no saying when that seed will germinate um there is i was just reading uh, just to take a, a slight pause before we move into the next dhyanamurti i was reading just this morning about dhyanam and i wanted to i just wanted to see what are some contemporary takes on dhyanam and one of uh, the writings talks about how shankaracharya has uh, discouraged the idea of saguna brahma dhyanam if this were the case if shankaracharya so i'm again extending this invite to all of you saying that when you come across readings that that uh, quote on behalf of shankaracharya saying shankaracharya uh, you know did not support the dhyanam of saguna para brahma then why would works like this what what why else would he write works like this what is the magic that is hidden here and is this saguna when we say puramathito aho purushika she who is the manifestation of the shiva's consciousness shiva's energy is there saguna in that that is completely nirguna tattvam so to be able to make that that uh, discretion is very very important for us and bhajagovindam itself says dhyayam shripati roopa machasram do dhyanam of shripati's divya mangala swarupam so that is jagat guru's let's be clear that jagat guru did not see a distinction between saguna saguna and nirguna and that is coming out to us through each of the slokams uh, that we are exploring today so that aspect of aruna saraswati and kanchi kamakshi is hidden here in the saundarya lahari from here we go into a form of devi that we are all familiar with thanks to shankaracharya uh, predominantly because annapurne sadapurne shankara pranavallabhe gyana vairagya siddhyartham bhiksham dehi cha parvati who does not know who one one who does not know not greatly familiar with anything else but bhiksham dehi bhiksham dehi kripa avalamban kari mata annapurneshwari something that is that everybody is familiar with annapurna swarupam comes out there right we are all familiar with this but shankaracharya's um shankaracharya's magic is that he brings out different dhyana murti so how is a dhyana murti determined this is what we need to understand before we go into annapurna stotram so if you look at the annapurna stotram nityananda kari varabhaya kari the swarupam is a little different from the form that we know the form that we know is what the devi is holding vame manikya patram she is holding the the patram the bowl here madhura sabharitam bibhratim pani padme okay she is holding in her lotus hands with madhurasam in this pot bibhratim pani padme divyair annehi it is divine annam it is an, it is the experience of parabrahma that she is holding not just physical annam divyair annehi prapurnam karadhruta manivalaye dakshine ratna darvim in her left hand uh, she holds the darvim the spoon dakshine ratna darvim ratnangim she is completely red in color ratnangim pina tunga stana bharanamitam tara horo pasevyam she who is worshiped by all the nakshatras by tara horo tara horo pasevyam vande purnendu bimba pratibhata vadanam ambika annapurna my offer my salutations to that ambika that annapurna who is glowing with a face of a full moon this is annapurna swarupam that is described in the vishalakshi tantra okay now this swarupam if you read in shankaracharya's nityananda kari vara bhaya kari this swarupam doesn't come out you pay very attention a different dhyana swarupam is coming out mala pustaka pashakam kuch dhari kashi puradhishwari bhikshan dehi kripa avalamban kari mata annapurneshwari mala pas mala pustaka she is holding an akshamala pustaka pasha ankusha what is this this is not annapurna no so why is he talking about that 
go to the kshetra go to kashi kshetra if you look at the annapurna temple in kashi kshetram there are two forms of annapurna there one is the form that is uh, they are open throughout the year. That is the Sarupam that Shankaracharya talks about in Nityananda Kari. That is the Sarupam holding. You, act, you may not be able to notice it because she's covered, the, the Sarupam is covered from with flowers from head to toe, but actually she is holding Mala, Pustaka, Pasha, and Ankusha. Then what is the other Sarupam of Annapurna that I just described with the pot and the spoon? There is that Sarupam. That's not in Kashi, is it? That is very much in Kashi. The Sarupam there is hidden in a door, hidden behind a door that is open only for three days uh, from Deepavali. That is the Sarupam of Annapurna that we are all familiar with, where Annapurna is giving Shiva Bhiksha. You can Google this um, uh, later and you can see that there Annapurna is sitting in golden color and the idol of Shiva is taking Bhiksha from her. Uh, that is the Swarupam of Annapurna that we are familiar with. But Nityananda Kari talks about this. So then Shankaracharya didn't describe that. Of course he did. Shankaracharya's compositions are not. Nityananda Kari is one composition on Annapurna. There is another composition where he brings out this. Now look at this, right? The Vishalakshi Tantram is an occult. Um, it is something that talks about Vishalakshi Tattvam. It is something that is not accessible for the common man. So if one, the common man has to do Dhyanam of Annapurna, Annapurna Dhyanam ensures that there is never an, a shortage of any kind of Anna. Anna is not just physical rice. Anna means Annat Anubhavam. That Anubhavam means experience. Any experience that is required for us to merge with Paramatma, that is called Anna. Any experience that nourishes us, that is called Annam. Her wish is that we have all those Annas and understand that all those Annas are coming from her. Now, if we have to do Dhyanam of that Swarupam, that Dhyanam ensures that there is no shortage of that Anna. So where do we do Dhyanam? As per Shankaracharya, Nityananda Kari is talking about another Swarupam. So will we will we stop with that? Would Shankaracharya has stopped with that? No. Shankaracharya has written another Annapurna Stotram where he has taken the complex terminology in the Vishalakshi Tantram that we just described and he has put it into the simplest of words. Uh, the, the words are so beautiful. Uh, again, I'd encourage you to, to also include this into your own daily sadhana, the Annapurna Stotram. I will read out the verse that Shankaracharya has directly been inspired by the Vishalakshi Tantram. Keyura hara katakangada karnapure. Keyura. Keyura hara. Ke, meaning with gems and uh, several kinds of necklaces. Katakangada karnapure. Her uh, karna, her ears are filled with gems. Gem studded earrings, these are. Keyura hara katakangada karnapure. Kanchi kalapa manikanta lasattu kule. Kanchi kalapa. Again, with her hip girdle, with the ornament on her hip, her vaddanam. Kanchi Kalapa Manikanta Lasaddu Kule with gems. This one, Kamakshi's had bells. This one has gems. So that this hip ornament is glowing. Dugdhana, here is the Vishalakshi Tantram summarized. Dugdhana Patra Varakanchana Darvihaste. Dugdha Anna, holding that Dugdha Anna, that Madhurasa. Dugdhana Patra Varakanchana Darvihaste. Vara, that blessing hand Varakanchana Darvihaste. Bhiksham Pradehi Girije, O oh, oh, daughter of the mountains, Girije, Bhiksham Pradehi, Kshuditaya Mahyam, remove my hunger, Amma. Bhiksham Pradehi Girije, Kshuditaya Mahyam, Amma, remove my hunger. Just imagine the sheer humility that Jagat Guru has and wants us to have when we stand in front of that Kamakshi, in front of that Annapurna. Kamakshi is also referred to here, why? That Kanchi refers to the hip, yes, but Kanchi is also Kamakshi. Then he's talking about Annapurna. No, what is this Kanchipuram? This Vinay is confusing everybody from morning. He's saying Kanchipuram Kamakshi suddenly is taking into Kashi Vishalakshi. Kanchi Kamakshi, Madhura Meenakshi, Kashi Vishalakshi. Same Swarupam. Saraswati Lakshmi Durga, same Swarupam. That is what he's trying to remind us through using words like this, saying, don't think yeah, Annapurna different, Kanchi. No, compartmentalization doesn't work in spirituality. It is the same Chaitanyam that there is manifesting as Kamakshi. Here is manifesting as Vishalakshi or Annapurna. It's the same thing. That's what he's trying to remind us. So the Swarupam that's in Vishalakshi Tantram, Dugdhana Patram that talks about Vame, Manikya Patram, Madhurasa Bharitam, Bipratim, Pani Padme. That simply he puts down in two simple words saying Dugdhana Patra Varakanchana Darvi Haste. Varakanchana Darvi Haste. Vara means blessing. When she takes that spoon and she's ready to feed that bhiksha with that spoon, is that spoon and that hand not blessing us? Big, uh, uh, Abhayastam or Varadahastam doesn't only mean that it's giving, that it's literally in, mod, in modern day terminology, Varadahastam means Lakshmi Devi's hand will be like this and there'll be dollar coins flying right out of it. Varas, Varadahastam means the hand that is blessing, that is giving everything that is required for me. 
what is annapurna doing she is giving everything that is required for me so that swarupam of annapurna that she is jagan mata she is not just giving me physical annam she is giving me any kind of experience that i need for my soul to grow that is what he puts here in nityananda kari there is another aspect that 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 comes that is she is also mala pustaka pashakam kushadharina she is the one who holds the pasha she is the one who controls prapancha she she is the source of all knowledge so the pustaka is there she is the source of all gyanam of all akshara vidya so the akshamala is there that is anapurna anapurna is a combination of both these swarupam so for those of you who visit kashi you will see the mala pustaka pashaka ankushadhari when you go on normal day but if you go around deepavali time you will see the the other swarupam that we just described which is the swarupam that we are all familiar with then which swarupam do i do dhyanam of do dhyanam of both do dhyanam of this of the anapurna that you are familiar with and read nityananda kari bhavam is the same that is what shankaracharya focuses on bhavam alona bahyam anandu govinda govinda yani kolavave o manasa anamacharya he said bhavam alona in bhavam dhyanam is possible dhyanam is not just about uh, you know arranging a fantastic puja room and then having symmetrical lamps on both sides lighting it and saying aha looks beautiful it does look beautiful and that does wonders absolutely but that dhyanam has to translate inside that is shankaracharya's real focus that is why you look at the number of manasa puja stotras he has written he has said do these pujas inside when you do these pujas inside you are doing that dhyanam inside so when you say i am offering shiva a bilwa leaf you are doing that dhyanam inside of you when you are doing that dhyanam inside of you you are viewing shiva you are viewing that linga you are viewing a bilwa leaf automatically dhyanam has happened no i said bilwa leaf and all of us imagine that three leaf for a second that is that is what dhyanam can take us towards that the mind has the power of envisioning use that envisioning for what it is meant for in the in this case use it to envision annapurna and view it with that power so that is annapurna tattvam that is hidden inside this um in the interest of time we will just do one more ahead more listed out but um uh, because of the internet issues uh, we will have to cut down on one particular dhyanam that i had envisioned but we will see in the end if there is there is time uh we will look at today being monday i think there is no more appropriate swarupam to to speak about than uh, uh parameshwara himself from kailasha so we will try and see if we can condense two but it's jagat guru's wish so uh, some of you may be familiar with this this is from the subramanya bhujangam this particular verse the subramanya bhujangam talks about different aspects of kumara it if you look in, in actually pay attention to the words there are multiple facets of kumara swami's swarupam that come out when what are some of the swarupams that kumara swami that we are familiar with one is kumara as a little child that is bala subramanyam second is kumara as a yavana swarupam kumara the warrior prince that swarupam of kumara has six faces that swarupam of kumara is ready to go to war the third swarupam is kumara with a shakti that is with valli and devayani and holding his vela yudham all these swarupams come in bhujanga stotra so different so one one so one deity multiple forms so when we look at this one particular deity then how what's the i can do ba- dhyanam of bala subramanyam i can do bala dhyanam of uh, kumara hold of with his wives no what is why do i have to do both because a, each dhyanam has a prayojanam dhyanam is never nishphalam uh, this is something i wanted to mention earlier and it probably uh, it, it's coming out appropriately now that dhyanam is never nishphalam even for a second if the swarupams that we spoke about on this call even for a second if they entered our head they en- they we are doing dhyanam of who we are doing dhyanam of something that is chaitanyam that is consciousness that is energy that energy has entered us through our mind and that energy will never fail us so even a brief dhyanam is powerful later on we don't know when it will come to our rescue but it will so when we do look at kumara swami's multiple swarupams every dhyanam has a corresponding prayojanam for example doing dhyanam of rama and lakshmana agrata prishthataschaiva pashvatascha mahabalo akarna purna dhanvanau rakshetam rama lakshmana may that rama and lakshmana who are may they uh, protect me in front and behind on my left and on my right so i'm imagining rama and lakshmana holding their bows and this thing doing dhyanam of this swam, swarupam of rama and lakshmana together ensures raksha so every every dhyanam as per mantra shastra has certain things that it ensures so doing dhyanam of different swarupams of kumara has different phalams as well so we we'll look into one such uh, that is a personal favorite uh, this describes the scene when uh, shiva and parvati are seeing kumara for the first time so the story of kumara as per the birth of kumara sambhavam kumara goes into a long uh, shiva seed is picked up by agni ganga and then it is deposited in the sharavanam and from the sharavanam it is the kritikas nourish that swarupam and then finally shiva and parvati go and pick up that little kumara who is growing up with the kritika nakshatrams 
So when they pick him up, the devatas seat them on a simhasanam in Kailasham, which is connected to the next Dhyana Swarupam that we will also go to. So there, Kailase, we'll, let's just um, do that interplay right now because then we can do two Dhyanams in one and have the benefit of Adhikasya Phalam Adhikam. We can have the benefit of having done two Dhyanams. So Kailase Kamaniya Ratna Khachite Kalpadrumule Stitam. Kailase Kamaniya Ratna. With beautiful gemstones, there is a simhasanam. It's a wide simhasanam. Kamaniya Ratna Kalpiche Kalpadrumule Stitam. At the base of a wish-fulfilling Kalpadrumula of a tree, a wish-fulfilling tree. Kalpadrumule Stitam. Karpura Spatika Indu Sundaratanum. Karpura Spatika Indu Sundaratanum. He who is looking like Karpura or Camphor, Spatika, he is glowing like crystal. Spatikendu, he is also glowing like the moon. Karpura Spatikendu Sundaratanum, he has on his left side Katyayani Sevitam. And on his head, Ganga Tunga Taranga Ranjita Jata Bharam Kripa Sagaram. He is a Kripa Sagara, and from him, one little Pravaham of Ganga is coming. Ganga, uh, tara, Ganga Tunga Taranga Ranjita Jata Bharam Kripa Sagaram. And on his neck, Kantha Lankrita Shesha Bhushanamajam. Mrityunjayam Bhavaye. I am doing Dhyanam of that Mrityunjaya in this Swarupam, in Kailasha. So on his left is Katyayani sitting, he is here. Now they both have just picked up this baby Kumara. Parvati is holding that Kumara on her lap. And this Kumara, this Bala Subramanya is so beautiful that nobody can take their eyes off him. All the Devatas are doing Stuti to Parameshwara, Katyayani and the baby Kumara. And in that Stuti, Shankara hears more praises of, Shank of baby Skanda and he wants to sit, he wants to experience that joy uh, of, you know, what is this phenomenal Swarupam that everybody is describing because he's here. This is this is also Shankaracharya's endearingness, right? That when we do Dhyanam, it's not uh, somewhere removed, there's some Kamaksha Papa. No, it's I'm sitting in front of you. I'm sitting in this, this whole scene. The purpose is that the scene should take us closer there. So when we sit there and we see that, Shankara himself also wants to see Apa, how will that, that Kumar Swami be? Everybody is describing him. He's there, but I want him here because he's my heart. So he uh, when that moment, that Bhavam, Shiva extends his hands and Shiva picks that Kumara up and Shankaracharya describes this saying, when Shiva picks him up, Kumara readily moved from his mother's lap to his father's lap. Why did he like his father more than his mother? Why did he come? Shankaracharya's genius. Saying that when you were more than ready to move from your mother's lap into your father's lap, what he means by this is saying that you saw no difference between them. This is Shiva Shakti Tattva. That when a child is moved from a mother's one lap into another lap, the child sees no difference. So the child does not say, oh, Parvati is different, Shiva is different. No, they are one Swarupa. That's Adhana Rishwara Tattva. When they are one, when one hand is extending saying, come to this side, does it make any difference at all? It is, it's the same hand. This is how Kumara, that's why he readily agrees. What is the verse? And when he, well, before we go into the verse, when he agrees, Shankara picks him up and Shankara is so moved. Shankara puts him close to his heart and then seats him in between them. Between, so there is Shiva, there is Shakti and there is Kumara Swami. Just keep this, this image in your mind. We will go into the verse. The verse is, Ihaya hi vatseti hastan prasarya. Ihaya, Shankara is, Parama Shankara in Kailasha is calling the child. Ihaya hi vatseti hastan prasarya. He extended his hands, Shankara, saying, Come here, child. Ihaya hi vatseti, vatsa, o oh, vatsa, come here. Ihaya hi vatseti hastan prasarya. Hoyat yadara chankare maturankat. Who did he extend his hands to? That Shankara extended his hands to the little baby who was sitting in his maturankat, sitting in his mother's lap. Samutpatyatatam shrayantam kumaram. Oh, one who was readily, who said, oh, father is calling me, okay, I'll go. And he readily allowed himself to be picked up by his father. Samutpatyatatam shrayantam kumaram haraslishtagatram bhaje balamurtim. I do, I offer my salutations, my namaskaram. I praise that balamurti who is, who just allowed himself to be lifted by his father from his mother's lap. So this is the bhavam of the sloka. Now, in this beautiful, beautiful bhavam is hidden one phenomenal form. There is Shiva sitting. There is Uma sitting by his side and there is Skanda. In terminology, when she is sitting by his side, we refer to her, refer to it as Sa along with. Sa, Uma and Skanda. Sa, Uma, Skanda becomes Soma Skanda. Chintaya Kandamula Kandam Chetashri Soma Skandam. 
this form is called somaskandam this is shiva shakti and kumaraswami this is a very very important dhyana murti of shiva of the shiva parivaram this swarupam ensures doing dhyanam of this particular swarupam of this formation ensures that the person who is doing dhyanam and the surroundings around that person are always protected by shiva shakti and kumaraswami themselves it is a phenomenal swarupam you look into any shiva temple in predominantly in dakshina bharatam this swarupam will without this swarupam it, the the, the uh, kshetram will not exist if you look at a place like kalahasti in kalahasti the kalyanam is performed for this swarupam if you look at kanchipuram the aradhya devata there itself is this swarupam so this somaskanda murti has many many dhyana swarupams has many many dhyana slokams as per mantra shastras but shankaracharya took the essence of that and saying that is somaskanda murti that that kumara swami who is sitting behind between his parents is a representation of both his parents number 1 Number two, that Kumar Swami is loved so much by both his parents. Number three, that Kumar Swami loves both of his parents and he sees them as Arthanari Tattva. So when we see any of these, when we see Somaskanda Murti, the idea is that we should be able to see all these bhavams together, and then that Dhyanam has that phala. There is always a phala for Dhyanam that is done with conscious effort. That that is why the idea is of reading a Dhyana slokam before the stotra. Do the Dhyanam. That Swarupam. holding on to it will confer all kinds of benefits when the time is right so uh, with that bhavam um, there are so so many works of shankaracharya that one can spend not uh, one hour but several 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 hours on uh, just his dhyana swarupams alone are a phenomenal opportunity uh, i'm just so so grateful that i had to had an opportunity to um, i can't even say scratch the surface because i think the 5 minute delay thanks to a uh, technology made me scratch less on the surface but um e- extreme gratitude uh, to indika moksha to oneness foundation for having me um speak about something in the in the context of so many other when i saw the list of speakers i really hesitated wondering as to you know i i don't think i i, I can even stand or hold the candle but um i don't uh, as i said this is not a panditya pradarshanam in any sense whatever came came by jagat guru's wish and hoping that with this aspect of looking into dhyana murtis these stotrams that we spoke about and several other stotrams of his will encourage us to think about what is the dhyanam here that jagat guru wants us to do uh, we can um, take a few questions um, but before that offering all of this to the divine lotus feet of uh, jagat guru swasti Thank you so much, uh, Vinay ji, for that beautiful unfoldment of Dhyana Murtis, and how Jagat Guru Shankara Acharya ji has hidden the bhava of on in each of his mantra. That was very very wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, most of the viewers uh, uh, want to know about if you have any other lecture series that is going on, ongoing, or anything, or anything you plan to do it in the future. That is. Uh, one of the questions that i could envisage from all the talks that is going on uh yeah i um thank you uh, firstly to all the kind comments in the chat um, gratitude uh, i do have a series going on right now for alap uh, my instagram handle has all the details i'm doing a series called the epic project which looks into conversations uh, today relevant conversations today that are um, found in the epics um, so these are ranging from Uh, very very interesting relevant conversations i am also doing a series of live talks uh, that i will be announcing soon so extreme gratitude to so many names here that i am familiar with and those who uh, didn't know me but still trusted me enough to actually come and um, uh, you know engage with me just very not with me but with paramatma through uh, this platform so yeah, thank you to all um, the updates are on my instagram page for those of you who are asking i see a question on um, could i cover something on dakshina murti uh is very difficult to say no because shankaracharya is dakshina murti himself incarnate um, i will um, however aksha i will be taking up a session on dakshina murti just dedicated to that tattva alone because it it warrants about uh, 15 hours so maybe i will do a, a series on dakshina murti uh, in the very very near future uh, that's my um, humble request to paramatma when he enables it are there any questions on on the um on the dhyanams that we spoke about or um, if anybody would like details i will just um i just put that out again um that will okay. be helpful yes yeah so okay the details with respect to my instagram handle is um i'm just typing it out this is my handle on instagram people can catch me here um with respect to am i only on instagram unfortunately i'm a little tech challenged but i will be 
creating a website soon. Uh, this question is prompting me to do that. Um, the details of the stotrams that we spoke about, we began with the Kanakadhara stotram. Dighastibhi, the, the slokam that we used is found towards the end of the slo uh, stotram itself. In the Saundarya Lehri, all, all the three verses that I referred, that is Kwanat Kanchi, Sharad Jyotsnam and Kavindranam are all found in the first 15 verses. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Kwanat Kanchi is the sixth verse. Um, one can just uh, go through the first 15 verses and you will find these three slokams over there. The Subramanya Bhujangam uh, is the one that the, where we find Ihaya Hivatseti. The Annapurna Stotram, I will paste the link here of the Annapurna Stotram for those of you who are interested because this is not the, the regular Nityananda Kari Stotram. I'm just going to be pasting that link over here for those of you uh, who wish. And uh, we refer to the Subramanya Bhujangam. I think, um, yes, there's a question here about Annapurna Stotram. That is the link for the Annapurna Stotram. So if there are any, uh, that is predominantly what we touched upon today. I had some more in mind, but um, in, in a future time. Um, so um, here actually you spoke about Sadguna Brahm, Brahman, okay? Yeah. Sadguna Brahman. So I was uh, curious about the transition that we have to undergo from Sadguna to Nirguna. Can you speak, throw a little more light on that? Sure. Um, I think it's a lo lovely question, uh, Samyaji. I think um, what happens with more and more engagement with uh, Sadguru, Sad, Sad, Saguna Parabrahma is that it takes us to a state of seeing that Swarupam everywhere. So this is exactly what is described in the Narayana Suktam as um, Antar Bahishcha Tat Sarvam Vyapya Narayana Sthitaha. Antar Bahishcha Tat Sarvam. Wherever I see, I see that Narayana. When wherever I see Narayana, I will also identify that there is no longer any me. Because even in me, even in all, whatever I'm seeing, whatever I'm experiencing, there is Narayana. When I start to engage more and more with that Saguna, it goes beyond a form. So Narayana at this stage of my life can mean Shanka Chakra Gada Padmadhari Vishnu. But slowly what happens because the power of the name is that Nara Ayana. Nara means Jiva Samuha. Ayana means the only solace, the only refuge for all groups of Jivas. All groups of Jivas inside me, all groups of Jivas outside of me. Those that which is the surrender for all of this, I'm surrendering myself to that. So when I slowly, the more I say Narayana, the more I do Dhyanam of Narayana, the more I go towards that Nirguna without even realizing it. I may be still seeing the form, but one fine day, it will not be just the form. It will go, it will take me beyond. So Ramakrishna Paramahamsa has written about this in great detail about how he transcended the form of Kali experience that joy beyond even the form um, I, 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 you can find it in the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna that will probably answer your question um, thanks there are okay, so questions that uh, people are asking for links I posted the um, Annapurna Stotram link here the Kanakadhara Stotram and Sandra Lahiri are available easily so you can look for those um, the other link was of my Instagram handle which also I posted which is just Vinay Varanasi without any space everything is in small but um, any other interesting questions like Soumya ji's uh, I would love to take those. So I didn't post any um, links of Kanakadhara Stotram or Sondra Lahiri because these are easily available. Just responding to the questions in the chats. So you can just Google them and you'll be able to find it. Uh, there are good versions with translations also available on greenmemes.com and things like that so you can pick any one of those the only one that i posted here is annapurna stotram i will repost it for those who missed it i have uh, one more question uh sure. you said dhyanam is actually needed for your end moment that is very important and uh you also said that uh dhyanam is the basic it kind of uh it is using our intellect for our greatest purpose. Right. So uh, can you throw more light on how actually doing dhyana will actually lead you to that end moment? It will be very helpful. I mean, absolutely. Could... So the mind has a tendency fundamentally, not generalizing, but um, typically the mind has a tendency to whatever it is used to is where it goes. So if it is used to getting irked easily, then towards the end, towards the end of life what happens is the conditions are the conditions are not very conducive so at that time there is there could be physical discomfort uh, typically there is some kind of physical uh, discomfort right there is 
either some organ is failing something is happening so there is some and life is leaving the body so there is some physical discomfort now in that moment so if there is a slight trigger to use uh, terminology that we're all familiar with even if there is a slight trigger what will happen is the mind will go into its default state if the mind goes into its default state it will do what it's used to doing if it is used to doing dhyanam in that moment even that trigger state will take it into dhyana so this is also the hidden idea behind fasting that in that end time food and water will be scarce food and water will not be going in in full capacity into the body the body will not be able to do that in that moment what will happen the body can get agitated thinking oh god the mind will get agitated saying where's the food where's the water but if the body has been trained through ekadashi chaturthi pradosham whatever it may be it is if it is trained to say okay even when this is not there i need to keep my focus there then in that moment this comes in useful so the idea that that dhyanam is just it is it is a preparation it is a work in progress constantly and without knowing it sometimes the mind will go into dhyanam sometimes even when it is required the mind may not go into dhyanam but sometimes without even knowing it the mind can go into dhyanam this is just about die, going into the deeper mind and saying irrespective of your natural tendency i will take you towards paramatma so that's the that's i hope that that answers that question yes thank you so much so we have a question here it says what is your process in understanding the verses of all the stotras shlokams etc how do you start and where do you refer so um i think one thing that i i'm very very particular is that whatever i speak should not be my own interpretation it's not i felt like this so this is the answer this is all through guru kripa and this is through guru parampara that i receive it it's not uh, me it's it's through the blessing of my gurus um where do i refer i think um it things open up as and when um the focus is on one particular aspect so that um uh, refers to that other dhyana shlokams that are more general and abstract so if you pay attention to uh some of shankaracharya's uh, prata smarana shlokams you will see this um, two two kinds of prata smaranas prata smaranas are smaranas to be done in the morning uh, prata smarami lalite is one of them etc but if you look at the the prata smarami hrudi samspurad atma tattvam satchit sukham paramaham sagatim turiyam it talks about how in the morning when i wake up as soon as i wake up prata smaranam can be read uh, even one while is one is on the bed uh, prata smarami hrudi samspurad atma tattvam i am thinking of that atma tattvam satchit sukham paramaham sagatim turiyam in i'm talking about a state that has no dhyana but i'm describing it using words like paramahamsa gatin turiyam so shankaracharya has also had taken that extra effort for us uh, perhaps to even answer a question like this to say that dhyanam he has helped us to take even about abstract forms but he disguises that abstract typically into a form so any the purpose of any dhyanam is to give us that form which us into the abstract uh, but there are so check out the pratasmara uh, atma slokam the i will the pratasmara parabrahma stotram is what it's called actually that will that will take you there okay um do we have any more questions yeah i think there's one more can dhyanam be done at any time of the day is it most effective only done in the mornings okay um as so i'll just answer this question as per mantra shastra uh so dhyanam has the most benefits when it is done at certain times or uh, when the transition is happening uh, in the outside sky uh, that is sandhya kalam be it dawn be it dusk be it midday there are prayojanams of doing dhyanams what dhyanam should be done at which time are prescribed so for example doing dhyanam of parashiva in the evening sandhya time is very powerful especially on pradosham days uh, so that is that is why the shiva tandava stotram is read uh, is uh at that particular time because that is that th- time enables that dhyanam to retain itself in the mind so there are typically these times are most conducive for that kind of dhyanam especially in the morning because the mind is also fresh so it 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 yokes on to that um specifically just one disclaimer with respect to ganapati the morning is the most powerful time to do ganapati dhyanam especially 45 minutes after sunrise at the bit the time from sunrise to 45 minutes after there are several reasons for this maybe some day um, if we do a session on ganapati we'll talk about why but dhyanam can be done at any time except it's always good to check with the guru what devata should not be should not uh, one should not do dhyanam at which time for example with ganapati any time is allowed to do ganapati dhyanam except midnight midnight is not allowed for ganapati dhyanam and midday that is at 12 noon is typically not allowed for ganapati aradhana so there are some reasons for this but typically most dhyanams are it is most conducive to do them in the morning or in the evening at sandhya kalam to concise a long answer um, so yeah. yeah so like 
Uh, viewers have any more questions? Kindly address it here. You can also, I'm just putting out my email here in case anyone has anything else um, that you'd like me to answer. You can always drop me an email. I'm, I will get back. I, I am a little slow, but I promise I will get back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vinayji, for that wonderful talk. And uh, I think we have, we've all been enlightened by it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so in the evening, uh, we have the session towards an Advaitic theory of beauty by Professor Arvind Sharmaji. Uh, kindly do attend. Uh, this is from 7 to 8 p.m. in the evening. And uh, do like us on uh, Facebook and Twitter handles. Thank you. Thank you, Vinayji. Thank you.